Moving on to forces, we'll begin by discussing a force that you've probably dealt with the most in your life, and that's your own weight. Essentially, what weight is, you're standing on, say, a scale, and the earth pulls you down because of gravity, and then the scale pushes you back up, and whatever the scale has to do to make you not move, that's basically your weight. So as long as you're not moving, your weight is given by the force of gravity that's on you, which is your mass times the acceleration due to gravity. However, in this case, we're dealing with an astronaut, which not necessarily standing on Earth, but he could be standing on the moon because he, he's much closer to the moon than the Earth, which would be way out here now. Predominantly, his gravitational force will be based on a much smaller moon, and so his or her weight will be very much based on the acceleration due to gravity on the moon, which early in the chapter we could have looked up it to be about a sixth of what it is on Earth. So you can jump quite a bit higher on the moon. In any case, let's talk about this weight. We'll denote weight by Fg. Now, they start by giving us the weight on the moon, and then they want us to find the weight on the Earth. Well, we can write a similar equation here because of course we know what G Earth is, but to tie these two together, we have to rely on mass. That's going to be the same because mass is the actual measure of the amount of stuff that is with you. And the same lump of stuff is going to be placed on the moon and in the Earth. So therefore, in both scenario, the mass is what's the same. So I can solve for mass up here and then plug it into my Earth weight. We can shuffle this around and get that. We got 250 newtons divided by 1.67 meters per second square, giving us that number, again, keeping a few more sick fakes. And given the mass, the rest of the problem is pretty trivial because we know very well that G of Earth is 9.80 meters per second square. Kilograms times meters per second square give us a Newton. It gives us that number and we can round that down to 1.5 times 10 to the 3 Newtons. So to answer all parts of the question, they also ask about the mass as well. Now the mass is not going to change whether you're on Earth or the Moon or pretty much anywhere. So we don't really have to qualify that. This is true as long as you're not moving near the speed of light, then everything kind of breaks down. But we won't be dealing with those in this course. So hopefully you can see the distinction between weight and mass and how you can change the weight fairly easily just by going to a different spot. In fact, you can lose weight just by being in an airplane further up in the air. But mass, that's much harder to lose.